All right, it's been a week since the last video, so here's my promised response. This time I've only gotten really two comments to look at. Luckily, they both come from opposite sides of the argument on whether or not the Droids TV series should be canon, so at least I can say that I have a diversity of opinion. So, the uh, first argument for canon comes from Skystar Nova. He's been following my channel for quite a while and has been quite helpful in giving advice in certain areas. He was the one who in fact informed me that the Expanded Universe did not actually begin with the Thrawn trilogy and Dark Empire, but back in the 70s, particularly with the Marvel comic run. The old Marvel comic run, I mean. He is also something of an inveterate prequel hater and quite proud of that fact. Personally, I never really hated the prequels, more I felt sorry for them, and for the people who liked those movies. I didn't think they were bad so much as they were average at best and okay at worst. Mainly because I feel that if it weren't for the bad dialogue writing, some bad acting direction by Lucas, and concepts like midichlorians and Jar Jar, the prequels had a chance without those factors, it could have actually surpassed the original trilogy, something that almost no prequel ever does. So I tend to look at the prequels as tragic, really. But anyway, his argument mostly is that, okay, quote, regarding the prequels, they never explained what Sith were, they just mentioned the word. Um, that's not really true. The term Sith did sort of exist as far back as, um, the original script for the new for the uh, a new hope in fact you can find this in a comic adaptation of the original script of the first film called the star wars and it does mention sith as being the great enemy of the jedi it's just that a lot of stuff from that first draft of the script was cut for the film and in fact a lot of the stuff that was cut did make it into the prequels later on so the idea of sith as the enemy of the jedi did exist back then, it's just that it wasn't until the prequel films that those became codified. I mean, even in early versions, like the uh, novel adaptation of the first trilogy, Darth Vader is referred to as Dark Lord of the Sith. It's just that they hadn't yet solidified what that term means. Um, you said it yourself, droids is just a simple set of stories, this time truly intended for children. They deserve canon status because they work, no matter Lucas' eventual screw-ups. I've commented many times will continue to do so. The prequels as they are will never be canon in my book. Droids has always been. There is not that much to explain. I mean, droids, Ewoks, and even the much maligned holiday special work. I guess the holiday special gets extra hate because it, has, uh, it is as child-friendly as Ewoks, but live action. So I understand why many hate it. We expect more when we see live action. Okay. Um... There, um, he also makes a few comments in previous uh, videos on the fact that the, um, the idea that the Revenge of the Sith has the droids be given to Bail Organa um, kind of contradicts the droids and, you know, because he doesn't like the prequels, he thinks that the prequels don't really count and that there's no way to get around that. I do sort of disagree that, that this can't be, like, uh, patched over, as it were, because, let's face it, ambiguity as a patch over for possible contradictions and plot holes, that's as old as Return of the Jedi, because that's why they needed to have the scene where Obi-Wan gives his certain point of view speech, explaining how, you know, his saying that Vader betrayed and murdered Luke's father has been purely metaphorical all along. I mean, to say that he meant to be purely metaphorical. And even in um, Heir to the Empire, in the 20th anniversary edition, Timothy Zahn points out that at one point he describes the Empire as having faced clones. His words were faced. His own words were, fortunately, facing doesn't necessarily mean fighting. My choice of words here was pure luck, and it helped me avoid a retroactive gaffe. So ambiguity as a convenient patch for possible inconsistencies that's, as, that's a Star Wars continuity tactic as old as dirt. In fact, if it weren't for the fact that Rogue One and Rebel Dawn had both explicitly identified the Tantive Four, I could have just... There would have been no need for a canon conflict video between those two storylines. Still, I think he does make a good point that 
ultimately, droids did what it was intended to do. It doesn't pretend to be smarter or more mature than it is. It is a children's show starring R2-D2 and C-3PO. And as I pointed out in all four videos, Anthony Daniels' performance and, you know, the way that 3PO works off R2-D2 is the best part of every storyline. So, again, I can't really uh, condemn droids too much for being in what it is, because it doesn't really aspire or pretend to be anything more than what it is. For that matter, neither did the original film, for that matter. It's just that New Hope was so explosively popular that it ended up becoming more than what it originally was. So, I do see, like, some valid points here. Uh, the anti-argument comes from Nate. Don't know how long he's been around on my channel. He hasn't commented as much, but I'm not going to assume that he's like just some new guy who stumbled in. Uh, quote, I'm going to have to say not canon. Ignoring the errors with future continuity, which were merely a product of the time, I think you simply need to ask, does this feel like it fits with the rest? If you took R2 and 3PO out of the story, would you know this is set in the Star Wars universe? I don't think so. It just doesn't have that Star Wars feel. That may be because it was made for children, or maybe because of the network regulations, but regardless of the reason, I think it remains true. Uh, yeah, that, that, that does echo some of my own feelings, honestly, when I, at the, uh, in the um, part four, the conclusion video. I do get the sense that um, Droids does feel like it's dumbed down, and I've always resented uh, the um, claims made by people that Star Wars has always been just a kid-friendly space romp. Again, in the final episode, I pointed out things like, you know, planetary genocide and the grisly deaths of Owen and Beru. Like, we see the charred skeletons. And then, of course, you know, there are the themes. The idea of self-belief, use the Force, Luke, and the whole idea of family legacy and destiny. In fact, there's a great video by... Um, uh, so Uncivilized that talks about Luke Skywalker and what makes him such a great protagonist for the original trilogy. And at one point when he, when it's focusing on the final duel between Vader and Luke, and Luke stares at Vader's severed hand because he's just chopped it off in the final battle, and then he looks at his own robot hand, and the narrator says over this, the video narrator says, in Star Wars, destiny is a trap. So... There are deeper, mature themes within the original trilogy, always have been. And droids doesn't, has neither, and er, droids has neither of the either mature content, you know, mature, or, you know, violence and such, and it doesn't have any sort of um, anything beyond, like, the most, it doesn't really have much in the way of themes either. The closest you get is Mungo Baobab in the last arc, where he sort of goes through the somewhat predictable but decently executed development of, you know, all he cares about is finding the rune stones, making a fortune, and, you know, having his name put down in the Baobab archives to, you know, caring not just about the droids, but about the people of Rune, and specifically about Orin. About Orin. <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's really kind of a tricky one for me. Because, like, both of them make solid arguments, and really those are the only arguments I've got, real. so... Uh, yeah, I mean, if you were to put a gun to my head, I would think I would have to agree more with Nate than with Skystar Nova. I do think that Droids is a good children's show. It's decent. It, it the animation is and is pretty advanced for the time. It's and obviously it's you know far beyond what we're used to now. But you know there are you have to take into account the time period. The same with any kind of historic piece of art. But I do once again feel that um, it, and like Nate makes the point if without without the two droids. The stories, are, the stories, and even the other, most of the other characters around them just aren't compelling or interesting enough. I don't entirely agree with the idea that it doesn't feel entirely like Star Wars. 
I do think some of like the uh, character designs, uh, and particularly for the droids and aliens, I think does help lend it a genuine Star Wars feel. Because I did mention in the first part, I believe that this series art style was inspired by a Mobius comic, and Mobius is not only like one of the great comic book artists of the of living memory, but he also did help inspire Star Wars and so much else, uh, else in terms of science fiction. I think. Was Valer was Valerian inspired by Mobius? I don't know, because I know no, oh, because I know that a lot of stories were inspired by Valerian. Uh, and, but yeah, um, ultimately, uh, I do have to think that droids isn't, and at least in my personal opinion, isn't canon. I do respect people who disagree with me. That's fine. As much as I, you know, pretentiously claim that I'm trying to provide an objective one. I do recognize that ultimately I'm just a guy with opinions. And really the only reason I'm even doing this at all is because Disney decided to just, you know, throw their, to, to make it an official. I think that it has been pointed out, and this is true, that really there wasn't really much of an issue of canon prior to Disney. Disney kind of made it an issue by dismissing all the stuff in order to make way for the sequel trilogies. Prior to that, there was already just the idea that fans could just pick and choose whatever they liked to fit their conception, conception whether, whether if stories they didn't like shouldn't like didn't fit their own canon. It was just a matter of continuity was the issue with Lucasfilm. So long as stuff didn't explicitly contradict one another, uh, it was solid. But again, I do think, but again, my own opinion is, I do think that based on the fact that for, while droids does get some things right, and it does, I, as like a, it does accurately, it accurately represents 3PO and R2 as themselves. That is a part that I would never deny the series. It is in that it really does represent R2 and 3PO better than almost any media outside of the films. I think like not even in like um, stuff like the Clone Wars TV series, he's nailed it as well, and that kind of helps when you have people like Ben Burt, who actually worked on the original trilogy as among the writing staff for Droids. But I do think that because, in part, because it was intended to be a children's show, and also because, especially, I think, as Paul Dini implied in an interview because ABC was so strict and so determined to make sure that there was nothing in there that might possibly be construed as uh, some kind of offensive or piss off the, uh, you know, all the soccer moms. Because this is the 80s. This is the beginning of the moral panic where everything from, like, metal music to video games is suddenly being accused of corrupting the youth. Um, so, and but again, those things, unfortunately... Uh, restricted the authors and they weren't able to well I mean constricted the writers had they been had they been given free reign I think they would have made droids good enough to not only be a decent children's show but something that adults could look back on and enjoy unfortunately I think that sort of is the biggest mark against droids unless you are already a hardline Star Wars fan I honestly doubt that an adult watching droids would like it. Like, if I were to introduce, like, the thing is this, we have a lot of people that, um, we're, we have, we're having another sort of debate here. It was the prequels versus the original trilogy back when those films came out. Now it's, you know, the, sequ the prequel lovers and the original trilogy lovers against the sequel lovers. Um, I'm not, I'm not a fan of fan conflicts and fan civil wars, I think that the best thing to do really is that, yes, we don't, we have to, we acknowledge the sequel films are bad. Like people said the prequels were bad, but I think it, but again, I think they're just good to average, not special, not spectacular in the way that like the original trilogy was. But I think like with the sequel trilogy, especially The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker, we now know, we Star Wars fans now know what a bad Star Wars movie looks like. And, you know, the prequels, for all their faults, none of them are that. Not even Attack of the Clones or Phantom Menace. But, like, if I were to, like... Or, so, but, sorry, I'm getting off track. Point is, if I wanted to 
is I think that what we ought to do is like to try and bring the sequel lovers over to our side of the argument by saying, okay, look, you like the sequel films, you think they're good. Why don't we also, why don't we, maybe we can persuade you otherwise by showing you Star Wars that is as good or more often better. Or, you know, again, as good, because, you know, they think the sequels are good. But I'm trying to, you know, be generous here. And honestly, if I were to do that, assume, especially if we use the original trilogy as sort of the baseline, I honestly don't think I could recommend droids as a way of, pers of bringing over the sequel lovers to our side of the argument. Because I think it, because it is, unfortunately, because of the restrictions of the time, so immature. And, it's, and it really is a shame because, again, you have Paul Dini as one of the writers. And we know, anyone who grew up in the 90s knows what he is capable of when you give him the freedom to move. Oh, I mean, this him and like Bruce Tim made DC so insanely popular and all of its characters popular because they did such a great job with Batman. Because Warner Brothers gave Dini and the other writers on that series a, the, a freedom that ABC did not. And so, yeah, I honestly, I honestly don't think I could ever like recommend droids to to like even like if I, even if I weren't trying to convince sequel lovers, anyone who is wanting to who might want to get into Star Wars, there's I assume like we have to use the original trilogy as sort of the necessary introduction point because I do think the first three films are required viewing before anything else. After that, and he were and and if, if I showed like someone new the original trilogy and they like asked me, well, okay, you say there's more, what else would else would you show me? What would you point me towards? I don't think I could honestly recommend droids to them. And I know that sounds kind of weird because, you know, we've heard, we've heard all this time about, you know, all these networks saying, oh, we got to broaden our audiences. We can't just appeal to the fans. We want to, want to, we want to spread our audience out. That general, the mythical general audience that, you know, seems to never really materialize when they make their crummy product, when they try to appeal to everyone and end up appealing to no one. But that's but the thing is about Star Wars is that it is a rare example of a franchise that in some ways is made for general audiences. And that's kind of what the and that's kind of why the sequels in a way were such a remarkable failure, even more so than the prequels were when they came out. Because in that del because like we don't well we don't we don't know exactly what Lucas what what kind of target audience Lucas was aiming at with the prequels, but I think we do know that Disney and Kennedy and the rest, they were trying to reach a big general audience, which again is counterproductive because Star Wars is one of the is again a rare series that already has a general audience appeal. And so, but oh, they tried. Oh, I'm I'm losing track. Uh, blast it. That's general appeal. Yeah. Well, appeal. In the, in the name of general appeal, they tried to spread it out that way, and that didn't work, work, because ultimately they were more concerned about trying to make their to make a to make a new kind of story and slap the Star Wars label on it, it and somehow expected us to like it and you know spend money on it. Sorry, I'm just not very. This is unscripted, so I'm very incoherent. I so apologize. Um, so yeah, ultimately the reason is that if I wanted to bring new people in, like people who actually show a genuine interest, not just the people that have like tried to cannibalize all of the things in fandoms that we enjoy and, you know, use them as propaganda platforms. Cause like we've seen that happen with so many franchises and I do sort of believe that, you know, gatekeeping is the order of the day. But gatekeeping doesn't mean, I think, letting nobody in. It just means we have to be more selective and more careful. And if we do find people that genuinely, you know, they look at the iconography of Star Wars or they see some of the films and they want to, want to know more. If we want, or, and if we want to like bolster the ranks as it were, we do need to have good stuff and for the fact and the simple fact is droids 
is okay. And, and that's only mainly down to the fact that um, because of the droid's relationship, because Anthony Daniels is there giving a good performance, which he always does. Without the droids, as Nate points out, the show really isn't anything to recommend. And so, after that long, long ramble, and I again apologize for my incoherence, but I thought that it would be better to do a, you know, a direct reaction. I do think that my verdict should be the droids is non-canon. I understand if you disagree, that's perfectly fine. This is ultimately just my opinion for all my pretensions. So... I appreciate you listening, and I am glad that some of you did, you know, respond to my uh, request for arguments and uh, opinions on the matter. I'm also very grateful to you who have subscribed to me. I'm within a hundred at this point of the time of this video. I'm within a hundred of making it to a thousand. I'm honestly surprised. I never thought I'd get that far. So yes, thank you very much, and. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Good night.